it's always an interesting conversation you have with, with especially a, a family-owned business, and you say, okay, if you had sold at X multiple six months ago or nine months ago and had invested that money in the stock market, where would you be today? And then you say, okay, now you look at the multiple that the buyer is offering. Are you relatively in the same place? But psychologically, they're not there yet. And it's going to take some more time, I think, for, for those two gaps to narrow. Uh, and then there, there may be creativity that can be applied to try to, try to uh, get past that, that gap in valuation uh, between the buyer uh, and the seller. And it's, it obviously doesn't work in every case. In very few cases, is it really applicable? But you can think of things of earnout or other contingent forms of consideration that allow you to bridge that gap in order to get a deal done. And I think that's what's going to start reinvigorating that, coupled with value investors coming in and really identifying that this is a time to buy, is going to start the mid-market kind of picking up on an M&A perspective going forward. When, when do you anticipate that happening? Um, in, in my view, I, I think there at least has to, uh, there has to be some sense that there is some economic recovery occurring, not in the data, but in the sense of at least the strategics feeling that they have, a, they have a, their hands around their business and they have a sense that the business is starting to improve before it's reflected in the numbers, before it's publicly reported. So you could see this happening one or two quarters before you start seeing the numbers reflecting it. But I think it's going to take that for the strategics uh, to get back in the game uh, at this level. So if it takes two quarters to see that and you're not seeing it yet, we're looking at mid-09 at, at the absolute earliest. Um, is that optimistic? I mean, just from a capital markets perspective, I mean, you know, at my firm, we've actually done a bunch of follow-ons for banks. People who have business models who've been able to grow, I mean, a local bank here called Signature Bank that has a very good deposit base. I mean, there are a lot of people who've actually accelerated growth in this type of environment who've been preparing for it for three and four years, you know, since consumer credit was sort of handed out left and right, and they felt they needed to insulate themselves and be prepared for the worst. But for the most part, there are still ability to be able to tap the capital markets for companies that basically can prove that they have a business plan in place, that, that there is visibility, and that they've you know, either proven in you know, prior lives or in today's world, if they've been along long enough, that they can deal in this environment. But you know, for the most part, for the new company or the things that basically fuel the economy, such as a technology company or healthcare company, you know, today it's just a different environment. Multiples aren't what they are. And you know, I think what you've heard from the people who are on the buy side, until something economically changes and fuels individuals just thoughts and you know not only where they think with their wallet personally but also financially at the office people aren't going to make many changes until they start seeing those credit characteristics and things change and that could potentially be somewhere around mid 09 but i would probably gather it's probably late 09 until we actually see a real recovery and actually see the government start talking positive instead of negative 